Hi, I'm Heather Caruso with UCLA Anderson Executive Education. I focus my teaching and research on the intersection of behavioral science and equity, diversity, and inclusion. My journey as an educator has its roots in my upbringing, um, in a family that has multiple races, multiple cultures, multiple religious affiliations, sexual orientations, political affiliations, I mean, you name it. Um, I grew up with diversity as the natural state of my everyday life, which meant that I had a lot of experience encountering its, its incredible potential, all of the joy that can come with it, all of the productivity, all of the creativity, uh, and um, a considerable amount of experience with the challenges that diversity brings. Uh, this, of course, I know is not uh, the kind of experience that is uh, common yet among a lot of organization leaders. And uh, I know that a lot of people are really grappling with these issues. And uh, I started to see that and see the, the need for better education in the equity, diversity and inclusion space. When I got my first job, it was in the Silicon Valley as an engineer at an, an internet startup that was run by a, a Japanese from Japan president and CEO and a Midwestern American VP and COO who created around them a, a wonderful multinational multicultural company. The company had a ton of talent, um, but not a lot of insight about how people from many different backgrounds could best kind of cross boundaries between them to really effectively channel that talent. I found that really interesting and eventually on the side of the engineering work that I was doing, um, I started to sort of coach people and try to think through using my background, the way that I grew up in my family and my community um, to try to offer people new options for how to interact across those boundaries. Eventually, I decided that it would be better for me to be able to speak not just from my own experience, but from more robust research uh, from many, many people's experiences across the world. That led me to become a behavioral scientist. Uh, I went to Harvard to do my, my master's, my PhD in organizational behavior and social psychology. Then I went to teach at Chicago Booth for a little over a decade. Uh, and while I was teaching there, I also started to run the Center for Decision Research there with now Nobel Prize winner Richard Thaler. Uh, and that gave me a wonderful opportunity to cross the work that I was doing in sort of the diversity space with behavioral economics and other branches of behavioral science to make sure that we were kind of knitting together the best insights from all of the fields that are interested in optimizing human experience, optimizing decision making, optimizing workplace interactions, optimizing uh, the, the outcomes that all of us are responsible for creating and experiencing uh, together in, in the working world. Um, after about a decade there, I decided I really wanted to take all of that experience and then move it into a space where I could impact not only the students who were gonna go out and lead other organizations, but I also wanted to impact higher education itself. So move to UCLA Anderson to become the Assistant Dean for Equity, Diversity and Inclusion while continuing to teach in the management and organizations area as well as the behavioral decision-making area uh, so that I could um, sort of uh, have influence in all of the different um, uh, streams of thought um, and be influenced by my wonderful colleagues uh, in all of those different streams of work. Uh, and that is what is what has brought me to to my teaching today. The thing that most excites me about the work I do is that it channels the best available behavioral science research into practical insights and skills for leaders who want to turn their good intentions for uh, equitable, diverse and inclusive organizations into actually good work experiences for their diverse stakeholders. So my work focuses on how the, the behavioral architecture of organizations, you know, the, the hiring structures, the feedback, the mentorship, the promotion systems, how those structures are often hidden but surmountable barriers uh, to the, those individual efforts to create those better workplaces um, with a, a workforce that's increasingly diverse. And my, my feeling is that once we bring these structures out into the open and we start to see them and see how they work and understand um, how human behavior interacts with those, uh, those structures, we can start to improvise with those structures. We can start to create and innovate um, and, and refine those structures more wisely. And that can unlock enormous potential for positive change. Uh, 
I, I think we're just at the beginning of this. I think our society is, um, is just beginning to really explore our capacity to do that work in an informed, responsible and effective way. Um, and that is why it's really exciting to be involved in it. I've seen students of mine apply what they've learned in some great ways in the real world. I'd say my favorites probably involve the way that they use something we call echo here at UCLA Anderson. Um, it's, a, it's a technique for handling some of the difficult moments in conversation that arise when we're engaging across difference. So the way that we think about that technique is to sort of start first by taking echo almost at face value, make, meaning that we want to have listeners echo back to their speakers what they hear the speakers saying. So when you get to that challenging moment in a conversation where differences between you and somebody else are starting to surface and you start to wonder, gosh, you know, um, how should I react? What do I really think about this? It feels like things are getting tense. It's useful in that moment to make sure that before you respond, you check to make sure you're understanding what the other person is saying the way they intend for you to uh, understand it, just so they know that your response is informed, that your response is kind of starting from the same page that they uh, are on. So it's really easy. A lot of people will find their own words for doing this, but it can sound something like, um, well, before I, I, I continue, before I respond, can I just ask, were you saying X, Y, or Z, uh, or was it something else, right? And you want to make sure that you give them an opportunity to correct your understanding uh, because sometimes, and in fact, we have a lot of great research to show that we don't understand people exactly the way they intend to be understood. And when we're talking about differences between individuals, especially differences that are tied to our identities, it can be really costly, really hurtful um, to get those things wrong. So those are good moments to really be um, especially careful. And when my students have picked up that technique and then they follow that, you know, sort of once you you go through the echo process and you get to a point where you, you have corrected your understanding, you've gotten to mutual agreement. Yes, the, the listener is understanding the speaker uh, the way that the speaker intends to be heard. Then you use echo as an acronym to engage in the conversation with courage, humility and openness, that's the E, C, H, and O, just to remind us that even though differences have surfaced in the, the conversation, we can engage with those differences rather than reflexively flee the conversation or try to shut it down. When we engage, it helps to do so with courage, knowing that we might hear some things that we disagree with, some things that are hard for us uh, to hear, but are important for us to understand if we want to engage with the other person and really start to learn from their perspective and, and create a channel for them to learn from us. It helps to engage with humility, understanding that actually understanding where they're coming from, listening to them fully is more challenging than we often think, um, and recognizing that the differences between us, like all of the other aspects of ourselves, um, they're rich, they're complex, they often come from many, many experiences, both personal uh, and in kind of inherited from, uh, from our networks. Um, so some humility about all that lies behind our points of view, uh, I think is really useful. And then the O in echo is just for openness, for making sure that we, we understand the importance of contributing authentic points of view to the conversation. We can't just be listeners or else, you know, there's sort of nothing, to, nothing to hear. We have to learn how to uh, let people know where we stand on things and be able to, um, to be open uh, about our points of view. So that echo technique is something we, we talk a lot about here uh, at Anderson, and it's been really wonderful to hear students come back and talk about how using that technique has helped them to have more constructive, more collaborative, um, more enjoyable conversations across difference than they have had before. Uh, and, and that is probably the, um, the set of experiences or the set of stories I enjoy the most.